Okay, so I wasn't going to make a video on this, but I thought, oh, what the heck, might as well show people. <laughs> that way, if I mention this product at some point in the future, you'll know what I'm talking about, uh, what I've done for testing. So, I did a video a good while ago about these deoxid cans, how they went from the nice human-sized, uh, you know, straw with the little spray nozzle, and they went to this fire hose or garden hose of a spray can it just wastes so much product it's too big you can't get it inside controls and blah 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 you watch that video and see my gripe about that um, but that led me and they had stopped making this style can that led me to start looking for some other cleaning products i wanted something to use now back in the day we used to use really good cleaners uh, only problem with those really good cleaners was they were extremely hazardous to the ozone layer. <laughs> so all of those were like uh, 111. It's actually this product here that where I'm going to be showing is uh, no CFCs or 111 trichloros. And what they mean by trichloros is most of your old tuner cleaners had like 111 either like trichloro. Uh, I gotta gotta remember what the heck was in those trichloroethane. Uh, or trichloro trifluoroethane or trichlorofluoromethane. Um, actually, I got a can. I got a, several cans that have the 111, but I got another can. There it is, laying over there. Here's some other old cleaners. This, but this was an, another good old one. Uh, what's this one? This one's a dichlorofluoroethane. But all of these are bad for the ozone layer, and <laughs> that's the problem. Um, now I save. I've got like six or seven cans, the big, man, back when you used to be able to get 16-ounce spray cans um, of the trichlorofluoroethane and trichlorofluoromethane ones. And what I do is, is I don't use those on tuners anymore. I actually just put that in a big glass bottle, um, and I use that as a solvent in very particular spots. There's certain little cleaning jobs I do. I need a, a cleaner like that, or even a Freon-based cleaner. But the... Uh, I was looking for a replacement for this. Now, of course, in the meantime, since I've found another product, apparently Keg has re-released the original spray can because so many of us were pissed off with this stupid fire hose spray can top. Um, that, you know, like I say, a lot of people are just unhappy with it and are starting to, you know, I guess it was hurting business, I don't know, but they're re-released that. But in the meantime, I found another product and I wanted to try it. Uh, biggest problem I have now for switches and contacts and normal stuff like that, yeah, I'm sure this would be perfectly fine. Um, same thing with this. But the one problem I have in the type of stuff I work on is I have potentiometers. Uh, that I have to clean and that's the main thing I'm using stuff like this for I'm cleaning switches and controls switches aren't a problem controls can be a problem because they have uh, the resistive material it's actually what's down in here is a disassembled control so it's that resistive material that's painted on the the backing there if you use the wrong product like WD-40 lubricant and I have seen people do that they'll clean out a control with WD-40 and then sometime later, and usually it doesn't actually take that long, a month or two, people will send me their radio saying, yeah, I clean my controls, and now none of them work. Or it works at you know full rotation one direction or the other, but nothing in between. And I'll have to replace all of the controls in it. And if I dismantle the controls, what has happened is that resistive material, that carbon resistive material around there, is actually flaking off. It delaminates that stuff off of the backing. So I wanted to do a test. So I found this this stuff here. Now one of, there's a couple advantages to this over this. Um, for starters, it's cheaper. Second, not only is it cheaper, the can's bigger. This is what five ounces or 142 grams. This can's 5.75 ounces or 100 and what the heck is it? microscopic printed arms length here 163 grams um, so yeah more product for your money more importantly to me and it's the reason I started looking for another product is it's got a normal spray top with a normal little red straw <laughs> that's so important um, so this stuff this is not a paid advertisement I had to buy this I actually bought three cans to give it a try because I'm going to also try this uh, outdoors for th just some other experimenting but uh, yeah this is supposed to be you know removes corrosion grinding it can cause distortion loss of signal improve reliability you know uh, seals bare metal surfaces against air moisture blocking further corrosion you know, fast drying no CF 
CFC, so chlorofluor uh, hydrocarbons or anything like that, and 111 trichloros. It's non-conductive, very important to me because I work on old tube type equipment, so high voltage. Uh, it's non-sticky and low odor. And the smell it reminds me of a product I've used for decades, which was called Repel. Now, which apparently was what you see, it's a little frog with an umbrella. It's supposed to waterproof. Um, but this, the smell reminds me of that product I've used for years called Repel on you know, exterior like junction boxes and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, they list everything. Clean and protect audio, video, computer, electronics, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read the entire blasted label, but if you want to pause it and read it or just go to their website. It's, is it on the can? Actually, I don't think it is. They do have a website. I actually went to it. And they have a bunch of other products. They've got gun cleaners and other cleaning products and waterproofers and corrosion inhibitors. Um, but the, I wanted to try this. But the main thing I'm concerned about is what does it do long term to the carbon resistive material? So this is going to be my test. This is my sample. So I've taken, and this is an old control. This thing's probably from 40s to 1950s. It's an IRC uh, build your own control. I've got thousands and thousands of those. Got all the parts cabinets. I buy them up anytime I can find those. But it used to be back in the day you could build your own controls. Pick the carbon resistive material you needed, the control body, which shafts, the whole nine yards, and you built your own. Um, but I've taken one of those because it's old, and those are a lot of times the ones that are easily damaged by, by using the wrong products. So I'm going to, I've filled this up as you can see. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this on a shelf, lay a piece of paper over top of it, basically to just keep dust and dirt from getting in there. And I'm going to come back in like a month or two, and we'll see what that looks like. I'm also interested to see what it does, the does the color change or does it do anything to the tin plating on the copper leads or that little brass uh, center contact wiper ring there? I want to see what if it does anything to those because it does say removes corrosion. Not only prevent you know, corrosion blocker, but it removes corrosion. So I'm assuming it's probably very mildly acidic at first, like the deoxid cleaner is. That's how it, you know, it's really the only way you can clean off uh, corrosion. A solvent's not going to remove corrosion. You have to basically etch corrosion off. So I'll be interested to see if it has any effect on the uh, the appearance of the metal. Does it get cleaner? Does it oxidize? I'm assuming it's not going to corrode because it actually is a protectant. But uh, and actually, turn around here. You know, think about it. Uh, just out of curiosity, let's get a silver plated so here's a old silver plated bnc to bnc jack but you can see it's tarnished you know it's no longer nice and shiny like a like a new one you know like a newer silver plated product would be so actually i'm going to drop that in there too so i'm going to need a lot more product in there to at least submerge part of that looks pretty good and yeah, that should be enough now to leave a little bit out exposed to the air as well and actually what I might do is is actually stand the control up on its side I'll stand that up and try to get that to stay up on its side so I'll set it like that on the shelf that way some of this is exposed to the air some of it's submerged in the uh, cleaner protectant and like I say, come back in a month or two. We'll see if it's done anything physically, you know, appearance-wise. We'll see how the uh, carbon-resistive material, as long as it looks like it's holding up really well, um, I might start using this on my own own equipment. And then, as long as I don't see any problems, I'll probably start using it on customers' products. But, uh, like I say, I was looking for something to replace this they've i guess re-released uh, the old spray top can so i'm probably going to get a couple cans of that to hold me over until i feel safe using this but i just want to show this so there's my test setup just a stainless steel condiment cup it's got a new old stock from the 1950s uh, probably to early 60s uh, carbon resistive potentiometer control element and just plopped in a silver plated uh, double bnc adapter there and we'll see what it looks like and uh, do a long-term test here and see how it makes out. So there you go. It's what did the bullfrog. 
I don't know if that's the name of the company. Yeah, I guess apparently so. That's the name of the company, Bullfrog. But like I say, they do have a website, so you can go check this stuff out yourself. Like I say, it's not paid for. I bought all. I bought this, so I'm just trying out a new product. So hey, maybe somebody else wants to give it a try. Um, you know, so I'd be interested to see if maybe somebody close to the ocean could do like a ocean salt spray test on some wire or a piece of cotton. You know, take some copper plated or copper terminals. Um, spray some of this stuff on there to see how well it does. Because I know that product Repel that I've been using for years is great at that. That stuff see literally seals the metal. It's just, yeah, an unbreakable layer of its protectant. And this, just the smell, that's kind of what it reminds me of. So I'm, I'm thinking this would be really good also for external stuff, protecting electrical connections, you know, outside that are exposed exposed to harsh environments so there you go bullfrog electronics cleaner and corrosion blocker beginning of a long-term test one really quick little addition i figured we're going to do a torture test i might as well just add some other stuff in here so just to see what happens to all of this stuff i've stripped off uh, there's two pieces of wire in there there's a piece of uh, stranded tin plated wire and there's a piece of solid conductor uh, copper wire unplated. I also dropped in a uh, tin plated screw, or actually I guess that'd be nickel plated, and then a phosphate plated screw. So just just wanted to really quick add that on. So I just I'm just curious to see what it does to all of these metals, if anything. Ideally, I, I don't want it to do anything to metals, but I thought I'd add a couple extra little things in there just to see long term what uh, what effects it has on um, any of that, if any. So, like I think, I'm hoping nothing, but I just thought I'd add that on. I did add a few things to the test batch here.